Okay, this is our question for today. And we are on the last point of Tulip, so we've made it. Thank you for sticking with us. Here's a question. How do you know that you will still be a Christian tomorrow? So, I'm a Christian right now. I believe in Jesus. How do I know that tomorrow when I wake up, I will still believe in Jesus? Is that a guarantee or not? Who de- what determines that? What determines that? Like, let's, let's pretend that somebody is unsure if they're saved, right? And I can tell them, oh, do you believe in Jesus now? And they're like, yeah, I do. Then I'm like, okay, great, you're saved. But then that person is like scared to sleep because what if they wake up and they don't believe in Jesus tomorrow? Can I assure that person that they still are a Christian if there's no guarantee that we're going to believe in Jesus tomorrow? So how do you, how do you talk about that? How do you talk about that? How do you know? Okay. Perseverance of the saints. We're going to go through this fast because I don't think it's that difficult. But this is the verse that I would share. It's Philippians 1, 6. And I am sure of this. Paul talking. Paul is sure that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. I want to define three things for you. The first word I want us to talk about is this. He. Okay. So Paul is talking. And I, Paul, am sure of this. That he, and this he refers to God. God who began a good work in you. Okay. And Paul is sure of this. That God who began a good work in you. Okay. And that's the next thing I want to talk about. Began a good work in you means your salvation, okay? He, he, he's, God started the process of you being saved. Okay, that's what it refers to in the verse. You can do your own study, but I'm just asking you to take my word for it today. I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. Completion. And that's, that's perseverance right there. Completion. Meaning, final. Done. Complete. Right? If God started something, then he will finish it, okay? So if God called you before the foundation of the world to be saved, that doesn't just mean to be saved when you call upon Jesus to save you and ask for forgiveness of your sins. But it means that you will be saved forever, all the way into eternity, all the way going to heaven, okay? That's what it means. I am sure, I am confident of this, that God, who started your salvation, will bring it to completion, will fulfill it all the way until the day of Christ Jesus. And that just means until Jesus returns or until we see him in heaven. Okay, so that's a doctrine. That's a doctrine. Perseverance of the saints. I'm going to give you some more verses. Again, I don't like to hinge everything on one verse because, of course, in the Bible, there's always multiple verses. But for the purpose of our class, I just give you one verse, right? Um, but here's another one, Psalm 57.2. The word fulfills, you'll find in the Bible, uh, this is the psalmist saying, I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. Meaning, God completes it, right? He fulfills it. You have this idea in your mind, and God will fulfill it. He will make it happen. He will cause it to be effective. That's what we're talking about. And God fulfills all his purposes in you, including salvation. Next, 1 Thessalonians 5.24. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Now, when we talk about God being faithful, it means a lot of things. In this context, look at what it's talking about, God's faithfulness. He who calls you is faithful. Okay, so God's faithfulness in this verse is called to, is, 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 is um, connected to him calling you. If God called you, he will be faithful to make sure that you stay called forever. He will surely do it. You can have assurance that he's going to do it. You can be 100% confident that if God called you, God will remain faithful to keep you called. And you know, one more. 1 Corinthians 1.8. Who will sustain you to the end? Okay, and the context is God. 
God will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that word sustain, right, it means to hold on, right? It means to carry out. It means to last. And so God will carry you out. He will make you last to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so you see that that thing again, right? The day of our Lord Jesus, meaning until Jesus comes back or until we're with Jesus in heaven. Okay, so those those words kind of help us get to the point. And here's the doctrine. Here's the doctrine. Perseverance of the saints. God promises that the elect will be preserved and persevere in faith. Now, um, that word preserved, right, you're not really going to find that in the Bible, but it communicates the truth that God is the one that does the preserving, right? So you think of a food, if it's preserved, it means that the food lasts. Right? For a long time. That's what it means to be preserved. And so God is the one who does the preserving, right? He's the one who's faithful. He's the one who carries out his purposes. Um, and it means that you will persevere in your faith. And it's God's promise to us, too. The answer of how do you know that you will be a Christian tomorrow? The answer is, well, if you really are a Christian today, if, if, you re- if God has really changed your heart, right? If, if that's a for sure thing, God promises that he will keep you until the end. And so it's not on me saying that I'm going to keep going back to God. I'm going to hold on to him. I, I know I'm going to be a Christian because I believe this, but it's because God promises that he will keep you, Right? The whole point of those verses is so that you have confidence that, yeah, God's going to take care of me. God's going to take care of my soul. God's going to hold me. God's going to sustain me. Even if I sin, yes, God's irresistible grace will draw me back. But it's not like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to force myself to come back. But God promised that he's going to take care of me. So even if I sin, I know God will still love me and I want to come back, and he will help me come back to him. Um, even if you die, right? Even if, this is crazy. Okay, think about this. Think about this. Let's pretend that I'm, like, super far away from God, right? Like, like super far away from God. And, like, in, if I were to live for, like, another day, then God would cause me to come back to him. But if I die in sin... Like, pretend I did something, like, really bad or something. Does that mean I'm not a Christian? You might not know. Okay, you might not know. But me personally, I would know. Because I would know if I'm really saved or not. And God would know. Okay, so sometimes you don't know, really, if people are saved 100%. But the person can know, and God can know, like, if I, if I truly love God. And that's why I like to say a lot, um, but... Just because I'm teaching Sunday school or just because somebody preaches or somebody's a worship leader, that doesn't necessarily mean they're a Christian. Those are signs, right? The heart is, is what really matters. And that's hidden. That's private between you and God. Um, here's another thought. What if I get old and like I'm a Christian, but I get dementia, right? And like my brain starts failing and my body just cannot think anymore, right? But up until that point, I was a Christian. But then all of a sudden, I'm just not able to remember anything. Does that mean that I'm not a Christian anymore? This doctrine says that, no, that's not what it means. God will keep you. And even though our body will fail, God promises to preserve those whom are really called and elect. And so if, if, if I get dementia, that's something else, right? What really matters is if in my life, God did some sort of work that changed me to be a Christian. Now, of course, those are all caveats, right? Those are like extreme situations. In the normal uh, situation of life, like you expect people to grow in holiness. You expect people to be close to God as you go in life. If you sin, you expect them to repent of your sin, right? Like I'm not saying that, oh, you can sin, because that that would actually prove that you're not a Christian if you just continue in sin forever. Um, So you, you have to take those things with a grain of salt, but... This doctrine is crazy, because if you take it to all those extremes, it has answers for all those extremes. 
And this is kind of like a reflection for us. Um, the verse, oh, I didn't write the verse down. Uh, I'd have to look it up. Let me, let me see if I can find it. Um, I'll have to look it up again, okay? But this is a verse from the Bible, okay? It says, listen, my beloved brothers. I think it's from James, if I remember correctly. Has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? Okay, so this, I think, kind of seals the deal for me in terms of the doctrine, because it does say that God has promised it to us. I need to look this up. I need to give you the reference. Listen. Listen, I It's James two five. Okay, that that's important. I need to put that down. And you guys can see how I make this thing, man. I'm horrible at this Google Slides. James 2.5, okay? Um, so with this verse... A couple things. First is that... Do you see yourself as being poor in the world? Okay? Do you see yourself as poor in spirit? That's really what it means. Okay? It means that do you see yourself as not able to like really like save yourself? That's what it means. Are, are, you, are you poor in spirit? Are you able to confess your sins? Are you able to tell God that we're not the greatest thing ever? But are you able to say, God, I need your help in my life? That's what it means. And then next, do you see yourself as being rich in faith? Do you see yourself as like, hey, if I have God, then I have everything that I need. If I have faith in Jesus Christ, then I am a rich person in this world, no matter how much money I have, no matter what happens. That's what it means to be rich in faith. And finally, how does being an heir of the kingdom impact your life now, right? If you will persevere in faith, it means that no matter what happens, you have the kingdom of God in your back pocket. And that's a crazy thought to have, right? Listen, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? So this is an encouragement the doctrine of the perseverance of the saints is not meant to like scare you into believing. It's actually meant to encourage you and to exhort you to live a life that pleases God because you know, no matter what happens to you, you have Jesus. You will always be saved. You will not die until God says you're going to die. And therefore, between now and until your death, you can do crazy stuff for God limitless in potential depending on what God wants for you. And I think that's how we are supposed to live our life. Being an heir of the kingdom impacts my life now because I feel that um, I can dedicate all of my life to God and he will take care of me um, up until the day that I die. That's what the doctrine of the perseverance of the saints means.